I hope you're sitting down because I've got some news that's going to make you want to hug your phone. WhatsApp has just won a legal battle against NSO Group, the creators of the infamous Pegasus spyware. It's like David versus Goliath, if David was owned by Facebook and Goliath was a sketchy surveillance company. A U.S. federal court has decided that NSO Group, the Israeli tech company behind Pegasus spyware, violated hacking laws. This ruling is a big deal because it's the first time a U.S. court has held a foreign spyware company accountable for what is essentially digital breaking and entering. It's like if your nosy neighbor not only picked your lock but also installed cameras in your shower and a judge finally said, yeah, that's not okay. This spyware can infiltrate your phone without you even knowing it. It's like a digital parasite that feeds on your personal information, your messages, your location, and probably your deepest, darkest secrets. And the worst part? You don't even need to click on a suspicious link or download a sketchy attachment. It just happens. It's the STD of the digital world, except instead of affecting your body, it infects your entire digital life. So, how did this digital demon worm its way into WhatsApp? Well, it exploited a vulnerability in the app's voice calling function. The attack was so sneaky, it could infect a device even if the target didn't answer the call. It's like if a burglar could rob your house just by ringing the doorbell, even if you're not home. And once inside, Pegasus had free reign to rummage through your digital underwear drawer, metaphorically speaking. Now, you might be thinking, well, I'm not important enough to be targeted by super advanced spyware. And while that may be true for most of us, sorry to burst your bubble, the actual targets of Pegasus are pretty concerning. We're talking journalists, human rights activists, lawyers, and even politicians. You know, all the people autocrats and shady governments would love to keep tabs on. It's like a who's who of people trying to make the world a better place, except instead of getting a fancy award, they get their privacy invaded. Imagine if Woodward and Bernstein had to worry about their phones being hacked during Watergate. Actually, given Nixon, they probably did, but you get the point. In 2019, WhatsApp decided it had had enough of this digital peeping Tom and took NSO Group to court. They filed a lawsuit alleging violations of the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act and the California Comprehensive Computer Data Access and Fraud Act. Now I know what you're thinking. Those acronyms are longer than my attention span. Trust me, I get it. But here's the gist. WhatsApp basically said, hey, you can't just barge into our digital house, rummage through our users' stuff, and claim it's for the greater good. It's like if your landlord decided to install cameras in your apartment and said it was to make sure you're not overcooking your pasta. Not cool, and definitely not legal. The court finds that NSO Group's actions constitute a clear violation of the law. Privacy is indeed a right, and hacking into people's phones without their permission is unacceptable. The judge's decision was essentially the legal equivalent of saying, nice try, but no cigar. NSO Group's attempts to wriggle out of responsibility were about as successful as a fish trying to climb a tree, which, come to think of it, would probably make for great reality TV. America's next top fish climber, anyone? Now this ruling isn't just a win for WhatsApp and its parent company, Meta. It's a shot across the bow for the entire surveillance technology industry. It's like the judge just put up a giant no trespassing sign on the digital frontier. And let me tell you, it's about damn time. This decision sends a message that just because you can create powerful spyware doesn't mean you can use it willy-nilly. It's like telling a kid with a magnifying glass that yes, they can look at bugs, but no, they can't fry ants for fun. It's a concept we call responsibility, something that seems to be in short supply in the tech world these days. Of course, NSO Group didn't take this lying down. Their defense was essentially, but we're the good guys. We only sell to governments for fighting crime and terrorism. Which, let's be honest, is about as reassuring as a fox promising it's only breaking into the hen house to teach the chicken self-defense. They also tried to claim sovereign immunity, arguing that because they work with governments, they should be immune from lawsuits. It's a bit like saying, I can't be arrested for speeding because I once helped a cop change a tire. 
nice try, but that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. Here's a fun fact that'll keep you up at night. The commercial spyware market is booming. It's growing faster than a teenager's shoe size, and it's about as responsible as giving that same teenager the keys to a Ferrari. Companies are popping up left and right, offering governments and other entities the digital equivalent of x-ray glasses. And the worst part? This isn't just some niche market for tinfoil hat enthusiasts. We're talking about a multi-billion dollar industry that's about as regulated as a playground dodgeball game. Now, you might be wondering, who's buying all this spyware? Well, buckle up, because the answer isn't going to make you feel warm and fuzzy. Governments around the world are snapping up these tools faster than toilet paper in a pandemic. And I'm not just talking about the usual suspects in the We Don't Care About Human Rights Club. Even countries that claim to champion democracy and freedom have been caught with their hand in the digital cookie jar. It's like finding out your health nut friend has a secret stash of Twinkies. Sure, they might have good intentions, but it doesn't make it any less concerning. To its credit, the US government has been taking some steps to curb the spyware industry. They've put some spyware makers on a blacklist, which is basically the grown-up version of putting someone in timeout. But here's where it gets interesting. The FBI apparently had a testing license for Pegasus. It's like finding out your dad, who always told you drugs were bad, used to be a hippie. The government claims they were just studying it, you know, for science. But it's hard not to raise an eyebrow when the same agency that's supposed to protect us from cyber threats is playing around with the digital equivalent of plutonium. So what does this ruling mean for the future of spyware regulation? Well, it's a start, but let's not break out the champagne just yet. It's like we've finally admitted that letting toddlers play with matches is a bad idea, but we haven't quite figured out how to childproof the whole house. We need stronger legal frameworks, international cooperation, and probably a whole lot of digital duct tape to patch up the holes in our cybersecurity. It's going to be a long road, and if history is any indication, we'll probably trip over our own feet a few times along the way. As we move forward, the importance of cybersecurity and privacy protection can't be overstated. It's not just about keeping your embarrassing selfies safe anymore. We're talking about protecting journalist sources, safeguarding human rights activists, and preserving the very foundations of democracy. No pressure, right? We need to start treating our digital privacy with the same reverence we give to, well, I was going to say, our physical privacy. But given the number of people who overshare on social media, maybe that's not the best analogy. Let's say we need to treat it with the same reverence we give to the last slice of pizza at a party. This ruling should serve as a wake-up call for the entire tech industry. It's time to prioritize user privacy and security over profit and government contracts. I know, I know, it's a radical concept. It's almost as if tech companies should act responsibly with the massive amount of data and power they wield. But hey, if WhatsApp can stand up to a spyware giant, maybe there's hope for the rest of the tech world. Who knows? Maybe one day we'll live in a world where our phones aren't potential Trojan horses for government surveillance, a world where we can send embarrassing autocorrect fails to our friends without worrying about a shadowy agency logging our typos. Dream big, folks. And there you have it, folks. WhatsApp's legal victory against NSO Group is a landmark moment in the ongoing battle for digital privacy. But remember, this is just one battle in a much larger war. So stay informed, stay vigilant, and for the love of all that is holy, please update your apps. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into the murky world of digital surveillance, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments. Who knows, maybe the NSA will even leave a comment. Hi guys, we know you're watching.